So up next, we have, uh, as we already know, a um, fantastic collaborator of Fred Moten, the um, wonderful artist Wu Sang. Wu is a filmmaker, artist, and performer. Her work is concerned with queer and trans communities and community practices. And her films, installations, performances, and sculptures move fluidly between documentary, activism, and fiction. She has presented work in film festivals and museums internationally. Please join me in welcoming Wu Sang. Um, thank you so much to Zoe and the Highline for inviting me to be here today. Um, it felt really important, so I came from far away. Um, this has been a year of a lot of brutal extremes, and it felt important to be here. If not for clarity, at least maybe a, as a way of trying to heal through processing what's happening together. So, I stand with you all. Um, this is called The System Is Not Broken. To vote means to express a wish or make a choice. For the last 50 years, voting in this country has been symbolic of who is seen as a citizen, who is entitled to rights and protections under the law, who is subject to the law. A vote is also a vow, like other civic duties, such as paying your taxes or serving jail time, that you commit to upholding the state. So what does it mean to vote in 2016? As I was coming here yesterday, I was reflecting on how the brutal extremities of this year have played out in my immediate communities. For example, some might say that this is a moment of extreme visibility or media obsession with transgender people. Yet at the same time, we face unprecedented violence. It seems like the more they celebrate us, or at least our bodies and appearances, the more they kill us and lock us behind bars. We may know the stories about how the system adapts to control us absolutely, but I guess it's different and much more sickening to experience it actually playing out. The past couple years, actually my belief system in the inevitability and the inevitable progress of civil rights has come undone. In 2008, we won a huge symbolic victory of having a black president. But that seems to have obscured the fact that the actual job of being the US president means ultimately upholding an ever-expanding capitalist war machine disguised as a liberal democracy. What is this world that we've created in the so-called era of multiculturalism? We now have the most drone strikes, the most terrifying domestic surveillance, the most racist militarized police, the most immigrants departed, the most brown people criminalized and murdered by cops or locked in prisons and detention centers. The rich are growing fewer and far richer while the rest of us are falling through a disappearing safety net and being swallowed by debt. They privatize and co-opt everything we try to nurture and create in response to this state of war, including our social movements. And these developments are not new. They are as old as the colonialism and slavery that this nation was founded on, just in new forms that are now more invisible and harder to talk about. The system is not broken. 
it's actually highly effective, now more than ever. I don't want a president. I don't want a dyke for president. We may even have a dyke for president in the next decade or two, but she will probably be an Ellen-type rich white lesbian who can check another box. I don't want Laverne Cox for president or any other marginalized person who has managed to gain enough mainstream visibility in order to perpetuate power the way it always operates. I don't want a president if running this country means sadistically destroying other people's countries with our paramilitaries and complicit dictators. So what's at stake here? What do we elect in these choices? So we can afford nicer clothes, so our products can be delivered on time, so we can Google anything, so we can fall in love, get married, feel cultured and sophisticated and connected, and kill others indiscriminately for the right to do so? Is our liberal democratic way of life worth the hundreds of children murdered by our drones, or the thousands of refugees drowned escaping wars that we orchestrate, or the millions of disproportionately poor and brown people of color locked away in for-profit prisons, or the countless thousands of trans people and others who are not seen as humans suffering premature death. For what? For what? Our lives are more meaningful than that. Or maybe better yet, we should say that our lives are not worth anything measurable in this American value system. In the words of Fred Moten, we need to stop worrying so much about how the state kills, regulates, and accumulates us, and worry more about how we kill, deregulate, and disperse it. We have to love and revere our survival, which is in our resistance. We have to love our refusal of what has been refused. The only option I can see at this point is that I agree with Fred. We have to refuse what has been refused to us. The system is not broken. It's doing exactly what it intended to do. I've also been thinking about a question that Raina Gossett recently posed at Arika's conference on prison abolition. Is there anything to be gained in claiming criminality as a political position? if it means embracing the ungovernability of our social entanglements. Zoe inspires me to think about what radical transformation actually feels like. It's not about who we elect or that anyone can lead us. It's about how we spend our time together and show up for each other. Her poetry brings our love and our struggles onto the surface of the city. Who the fuck are we to want to rule the world? Let's face it, we're never going to run the world because to do so would mean trading in the beautiful parts of us that make us wild, make us brown, make us queer, lovers, fallen, dispersed, disabled, impossible, criminal. They will eventually take these qualities from us too. Nothing is sacred. So we need to keep moving and changing shape, inventing new, new ways to ask the questions. We need to keep fighting, knowing even when we're going to lose. Only in that loss will we gain our survival. Thank you. <laughs>